With most of the big moves out the way, in today's video, we're going to be doing the winners and losers of the 2019 NBA Free Agency. So if you guys like my content, make sure you like and subscribe. Let's go crazy on the like button and try to get 11,000 likes on today's video. And we're going to hop right into it. <laughs> Okay, guys, I need to start this off by saying there are some free agents left. The big one, obviously, being Kawhi Leonard, but him being the only top 20 free agent that hasn't made a decision, I think there's been more than enough moves to have a good idea of the winners and losers. Now, obviously, Kawhi's decision is going to create some winners and losers. If the Lakers get them, they are a winner. If they don't, in my opinion, they are one of the biggest losers, with most of the notable free agents that were their backup plan already locked up. If the Raptors keep them, they are winners, retaining their finals MVP. If they lose them, they're losers, and possibly the best option is to look into a rebuild. If the Los Angeles Clippers get them, they obviously become winners and instant contenders. If they don't get them, they would have to be losers just with how many rumors there were throughout the season connecting them to landing Kawhi. But with all that being said, let's get into the winners and losers we've had so far. Starting it off with some losers, we have the Phoenix Suns. Their terrible offseason began by trading one of their best players in TJ Warren. This is a guy that last season averaged 18 points per game, shooting 49% from the field and 43% from three at 25 years old, and he's on a pretty decent contract. This move appeared to be in order to free up some cap space, potentially to get a guy like D'Angelo Russell. Maybe Russell was their intention and it didn't work out, but they decided to give Ricky Rubio a three-year, $51 million contract. Now, Rubio is not a bad player, but it really doesn't make much sense. Rubio only got 13 points, 6 assists, shooting 40% from the field and 31% from 3 this past season. They have to be one of the biggest losers given the context of trading TJ Warren and considering that they will most likely be a lottery team next season. This is where it really has me scratching my head. If you can get a guy like D'Lo, great. But settling when the 2020 NBA draft is loaded with great point guards such as Cole Anthony, Theo Maldon, RJ Hampton, and Nico Mannion doesn't make any sense. I had them as the biggest loser in the draft, and they are taking another L this offseason. It might be only a matter of time before Devin Booker wants out. Next, we got a consensus loser and possibly the biggest loser of all free agency, and that's going to be the New York Knicks. I feel so bad for Knicks fans. At one point this year, we were talking about them potentially having Zion Williamson, Kevin Durant, and Kyrie Irving. Now, it sucks you didn't manage to bring any of those guys in, but they decided to give Julius Randle a three-year $63 million, Josh Gibson a two-year $20 million, and Bobby Portis a two-year $31 million contract. Three guys that all play the same exact position. But it gets even worse when it was reported that Dolan was unwilling to give Kevin Durant a max contract. Now, obviously, there's some future health concerns for Kevin Durant with his Achilles injury, but we are talking about Kevin Durant. They were unwilling to give one of the best players of all time a max contract, but will throw the bag at Julius Randle, Taj Gibson, and Bobby Portis. What are they doing? Another loser I had would be the Milwaukee Bucks. They were the top regular season team in the league last year and should be right up there again with their MVP and Giannis Antetokounmpo. But I had to have them as a loser as on paper, they got worse. They lost their restricted free agent in Malcolm Brogdon and a sign and trade with Indiana. He's everything you want in a role player. He's a great defender who averaged 16 points per game on incredible 50-40-90 shooting splits. They also gave George Hill a three-year $29 million contract that really made no sense whatsoever as he's 32 years old and only averaged seven points per game shooting 28% from three for them last season. Now they did hold on to Middleton and Brooke Lopez, but overall, I have to give them an L. Next, we got the Charlotte Hornets. Now they didn't end up re-signing Kemba Walker, but I really don't mind that if they went right into a rebuild. But giving an unproven Terry Rozier a three-year $58 million contract, I really don't understand what they are doing, but there is a chance that Terry Rozier could be that great player he's shown flashes of. But giving $60 million to a player that averages less than 40% from the field on his career is a little ridiculous. Another loser I have would be the Sacramento Kings. I was honestly confused with their moves. I don't mind giving Barnes the extension, but Dwayne Dedman, a three-year $40 million, and Trevor Ariza, a two-year $25 million contract is a little bit questionable. They had a lot of cap space, and while they aren't in the conversation for any of the big names, I think they were much better options. Another loser I have would be the Orlando Magic. They didn't make any moves that were necessarily bad, but re-signing Vucevic and Ross to big deals, along with giving Alfred Gamino a three-year $29 million contract just to be the seventh or eighth seed in the Eastern Conference, in my opinion, doesn't make much sense. With promising talent such as Bamba, Isaac, and Aaron Gordon, if I was a Magic fan, I would much rather than build around them and possibly add some more lottery selections. 
looking at the winners, there's one that really jumps off the paper to me, and that's going to be the Utah Jazz. I absolutely love what they are doing lately. They began the summer by acquiring Mike Conley and managed to sign a perfect fit in Bohan Bogdanovich and solid role player in Ed Davis on a great contract. Bohan is a knockdown shooter who averaged 18 points per game last season, shooting 50% from the field and 42% from three. He's not a great defender, but far from a liability, and I don't mind the price they're paying at four years, 73 million. The Jazz are in a great position with projected parity that we'll see next season. They will have a great two-way point guard in Mike Conley, a defensive player of the year in Rudy Gobert, an amazing young scorer in Mitchell, who averaged 24 points per game, shooting 36% from three in only his second season, and two very solid forwards in Joe Ingles and new addition Bogdanovich. There is no reason to believe they won't be competing at the top of the Western Conference. There is no question the Brooklyn Nets are the biggest winners in free agency and had one of the best free agencies we have ever seen. There is not much to be said here. They brought in two of the best players in the league in Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving, and they got them to take a pay cut in order to bring in DeAndre Jordan. This is on top of a playoff core that includes Spencer Dinwiddie, Karis Lilbert, Jared Allen, and Joe Harris. They also ended up doing a sign and trade for D'Angelo Russell, bringing in some more value. The Nets should be a top team for the foreseeable future, even if Kevin Durant is a shell of his former self, and there is a lot to get excited about for Nets fans right now. Another big winner I have would be the Indiana Pacers. Yes, they lost a great player in Bohang Bogdanovich, but they ended up getting better. They added an amazing player in Malcolm Brogdon, who alongside Victor Oladipo would form an amazing backcourt. And they also went out and got Jeremy Lamb. This is a guy that last season averaged 15 points per game. He got 5.5 rebounds, 2.2 assists, shooting 44% from the field and 35% from three. They already have a very solid front court with Sabonis and Miles Turner. They end up trading for TJ Warren. If Victor Oladipo comes back to 100%, they could be a top team in the Eastern Conference and in my opinion are going to be one of the funnest teams to watch. Another clear winner to me would be the New Orleans Pelicans. It looks like they have no intentions of being a lottery team, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Right now, they have cap space, and they went out and used it very wisely. They're going to have growth in their young players, such as Josh Hart, Lonzo Ball, and Brandon Ingram. They just added an amazing rookie class, and Akeel Alexander-Walker, Jackson Hayes, and Zion Williamson. They already have Drew Holiday on the roster. They've got incoming first-round picks from other teams. Why not, while you have cap space, use it and they went out and they got Derek Favors and JJ Redick these are two very very solid role players I absolutely love what they got going on New Orleans and I think they have to be one of the biggest winners another one I would have this is definitely a slight winner but that's going to be the Trailblazers while they ended up losing Al Farouk Amino they ended up trading for Kent Bazemore with the fear that Rodney Hood would leave them in free agency and still managed to re-sign him to a pretty favorable deal as recently reported, they also pulled off a sign and trade to go out and get Hassan Whiteside. Now, they got rid of Myers Leonard and Mo Harkless, which should hurt their depth. But with the health concerns of Yosef Nurkic, this is a team that's competing at the top of the Western Conference. Going out and getting Hassan Whiteside, in my opinion, was a great, great move. Another massive winner we saw on the first day of free agency would be the Golden State Warriors, as they managed to pull off a sign and trade for D'Angelo Russell. This really came out of nowhere and looks like something you would see in a 2K rebuild, but it doesn't change the fact that that this could pay off huge. On paper, this really doesn't make much sense with Klay Thompson and Stephen Curry, but they do have a couple options going into the future. Maybe they find the perfect rotation of stacking all their minutes, or maybe they get a massive amount of value by trading him down the line for players that fit better into the roster. We're already hearing some rumors on Twitter that that is inevitable. This was by far the biggest surprise of free agency so far, and I have to have them as massive, massive winners. Lastly, we got some teams that aren't necessarily winners or losers in my book, but they made big enough moves that it's worth talking about. The first we'll look at it will be the Philadelphia 76ers. They end up losing JJ Redick and Jimmy Butler, but gained great players in Josh Richardson and Al Horford. While Al Horford is a great player and was instrumental to Boston's success, I have questions about his fit alongside Joel Embiid, and right now at 33 years old, as he regresses, this contract could become a lot less attractive. The Miami Heat, they ended up getting a top player in Jimmy Butler, but lost Josh Richardson and Goran Dragic, so I don't really think this changes their position in the Eastern Conference. But down the road, when you're dealing with a high-level player like Jimmy Butler, you could always trade him and head into a rebuild. Now, there are some decent free agents left, the most notable obviously being Kawhi Leonard, who it does look like it's going to take a couple of days to make his decision, similar to what we saw Kevin Rand do in 2016. We also have DeMarcus Cousins, who's coming off this injury. It's going to be interesting to see where and how much he ends up getting. Some or all these players could be off the table by the time you're seeing this video, but some solid role players left would include Marcus Morris, Wesley Matthews, and Danny Green. The Los Angeles Lakers have become very dependent on this upcoming Kawhi decision. All their backup plans, such as D'Angelo Russell, are off the table. 
There aren't many decent mid-level players left, and by the time Kawhi actually gets around to making this decision, there might not be any, but that's the end of you guys. So far, it's been one of the craziest off-seasons in NBA history. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below, and if you guys like the video, make sure you like and subscribe, and the shoutouts are gonna be Joshua Way, Brandon Jones, Wyatt Wins, DH, and Justin Bird. If you guys want to shout out in the next video, all you gotta do is like the video, comment liked, and I'll shout five of you guys out. With all that being said, hope you guys have a great day. And peace.